morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, October 14th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle, very happy to be joined by Patrick Murphy. Before we get into the meat of the show, I want to let everybody know that uh, the media schedule this week, as far as availability with Ohio State's coaches and players, everything's moved up one day this week. So we will be getting Ryan Day today instead of tomorrow. So we'll get Coach Day today at noon, and then after he talks for about 25 minutes, he's been very generous with his time. Sometimes he talks for over 30 minutes to us, uh, usually on Tuesdays, this week on Monday. But after we get uh, Coach Day, we're going to get co-defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley, who is just great across the board, including when he meets with the media. Uh, a lot like Ryan Day, who's great across the board, uh, including when he meets with the media. So Coach Day at noon, and Coach Halfley at about 1230 and then after Coach Halfley speaks, uh, around 1 o'clock, uh, we'll get Jonathan Cooper, we'll get Jordan Fuller, we'll get Josh Myers, and I believe the fourth player is Jake Hausman. So keep it locked to Bucknuts. We're going to have stories and videos on all of that good stuff later today. Tuesday, we'll get players after practice. Wednesday, Ryan Day will do his weekly radio show from noon to 1 that he usually does Thursday, and then we will get Ryan Day, uh, the local media will, in the team room from 1 o'clock until 1.10 on Wednesday, and then the Buckeyes head out on Thursday to Chicago, uh, and they will release their status report and their depth chart on Thursday. So, speaking of Friday, Buckeyes off a of bye. Patrick playing Northwestern in Evanston this Friday night. It's interesting. Normally, I wouldn't be a fan of a Friday night game, but coming off a of bye, I like it because you know the Buckeyes have had a chance to rest. Then they'll get eight days before the Wisconsin game. Ohio State favored by twenty-seven and a half points. Just your reaction when you hear that line and your thoughts on this game in general, Patrick. Normally, this would be uh, that would be a pretty big spread, uh, but with the way Ohio State has handled opponents this year, it's it's hard to you know it's hard to look at that and think that that the Buckeyes can't cover that or at least come close. Um, I believe they're five and one against the spread this season. Uh, you know, we go back to to the Cincinnati game, and that was probably the one where I looked at it and was like. You know, I don't, I'm not sure they're going to cover that, and, and they go out and it's 42 to zero. So this Ohio State team has has done nothing to make me think they can't cover it. And then you look at Northwestern, and, and this is a team that's really struggled. Obviously, played Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game last year. It looked like they were moving in the right direction as a program, and have not been great to start this season. Um, you know, one of the worst offenses um, in the Big Ten, and uh, you know. Hunter Johnson came over from Clemson. That has not worked at quarterback. Um, this team just struggles to move the ball. We've obviously seen what Ohio State's defense can do to good offenses, and uh, I'm not sure how Northwestern will uh, will successfully move the ball, put up points against Ohio State, and I can't see this defense stopping the Buckeyes. Um, it just, you know, it, it shapes up for, for a big day for Ohio State, a big night, I guess. Um, now, you know, there is – as you mentioned, the, the schedule, the fact that this is a Friday night game um, changes things a little bit, but I honestly don't see that mattering. Uh, this Northwestern team just doesn't look to be in the same class as Ohio State from what I've seen this year. What do you make of the Friday night game? It's, it's just interesting to me. Like, you know, like I said earlier, it's, uh, I like it because you know, I think normally if it was just a regular week where they played on Saturday and then – you know, and they had to play. You know, the very the following Friday. I think you know I wouldn't be necessarily a fan of that. Um, but the fact they're coming off a bye week, I like it. And then, as I said earlier, it gives them eight days to prepare for Wisconsin. Just your thoughts on the rare Friday night game for the Buckeyes? I do think it's strange. You know, as athletes, you get into quite a routine um, going through the game week and whatnot. It helps that they did not play this past week because they can kind of shift from the bye week um, into more of a normal game week routine um but yeah i do think there's there's something to having it you know a day early and and just adjusting to that now like i said the bye week helps the fact that you know high state is playing northwestern um and and they should be able to handle things i think helps uh the one thing i guess you could say is with wisconsin looming on the other side of this week you know does does ohio state look ahead at all um that doesn't affect the day of the week but um you know that that's my one concern is, is do they look pass this team a little bit I don't think they will I think Ryan Day will have this Buckeye team ready to go um, and maybe the fact that it is a Friday night game you know kind of grabs their attention a little bit more so maybe that's that part of it helps Ohio State stay focused but yeah it is weird just you know shifting everything up a day um, you know college football on a Friday is not my favorite thing in the world just because of of the tradition of Friday night high school football but 
if you got to do it every couple of years or, or whatever it is, then, uh, you know, this is the way to do it. Going to Northwestern in a night game, uh, you know, I, I think they'll be fine with it, but it is a little strange, like I said. Yeah, I like it. Um, you know, a little, little, little change up. And it gives us now we have three Saturdays during, I'm just going to, you know, from a selfish uh, sports writer who covers college football standpoint, gives us three Saturdays during the college football season to watch college football games, the two bye weeks that Ohio State has, and then the day after, um, you know, this Friday's game. So um, I personally like it. So we'll get to more team stuff in a minute. I do want to talk about the new recruit, uh, Ryan Watts, four-star corner, uh, committed to Ohio State yesterday, a young man out of Texas. Uh, the, the rich continue to get richer. Ohio State number three recruiting class in the country, now 24 strong in this class, uh, big, tall, uh, I mean, he's he's even tall. I mean, we got you know, there's there's guys now you would say are tall corners like Jeff Okuda and Sean Wade. He's even a little taller than Sean Wade. He's listed at six two and a half. Now sometimes what they're listed at in high school, shockingly to everybody out there, might not be exactly what they're listed at when they get to college. But a lot of these kids now are, are you know they're measured at, at combines and things like that. So I don't know. The point is, man, this this 2020 recruiting class was already excellent, and it just got better with Ryan Watts, Patrick. Absolutely, like you said, the rich get richer. And credit to Jeff Hathley, credit to this this Buckeye staff for for going out and getting this kid. Who was committed to Oklahoma, uh, decommitted, I believe, a couple weeks ago. Made a visit to Ohio State. Um, you know, like you said, a, a big physical corner um, a guy who's who's already very good in the pass game, defending the pass. From my understanding, we'll have to improve somewhat when it comes to defending the run. But when he gets to Ohio State, gets in the strength training program and, and whatnot, um, that, that shouldn't be difficult given his, his physical abilities. Um, this is the type of guy that Ohio State, you know, everybody wants, but Ohio State has done a very good job of going out and getting um, and, you know, find another one, another kid out of Texas, which continues that pipeline um, from Columbus. So, yeah, this is, this is another big get for the Buckeyes, um, a nice, nice addition on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Uh, yeah, and, and like you said, I think that's a perfect way to describe it. The rich get richer. Um, Ohio State adds another talented defensive back prospect for this 2020 class. Well, look at middle linebacker. We talked about it throughout the offseason, what might happen. Um, you know, I thought Taraja Mitchell might be a guy that would emerge there. He's been banged up, and yeah. before that he was moved to outside linebacker anyway. Um, and I think when he's been in there, you know, he's he's looked good. You know, before he got hurt, um, Malik Harrison is just so good. You're not going to take Malik Harrison off the field. That, that young man will be playing in the NFL for years. Uh, we talk a lot about Okuda and Chase Young for you know with good reason, but Malik Harrison is also going to be taken. No, I don't, probably not first round, but I bet he'll be like a second round pick, third at worst in the draft um, this coming April. Uh, but I do want to look at middle linebacker Patrick um, Baron Browning and Tough Borland. They've been splitting snaps to a certain degree. Browning seems like he's playing better than Borland. Do you think, um, kind of assess that for me, do you think they might start playing Browning even more? Do you think they might continue going with what they've been doing? Just what are you seeing at middle backer? I think with tough Borland, the, 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 what you see, what you focus on a lot of the times isn't where his results come from. I think he's a guy that, does a lot of things really well that don't necessarily show up on the stat sheet. And I go back to last spring when I was at the coaches clinic and Al Washington was showing film of practice and he kept pointing out tough Borland and, and kind of the little things he does in practice on any given play that, you know, helps set up other things. And I think that that's why when people see tough Borland grade out as champion and why he's in there so much, I think it's those little things that make him successful that help the Buckeye defense. With that said, I think Baron Browning is an impact guy. I think he's, you know, the type of guy that, that gets tackles, makes those big plays, um, you know, sacks, things like that. And I think that because they have both of those players, they're going to keep rotating them situationally and whatnot. Um, you know, I think they both have an impact on this Buckeye defense. Uh, Baron Browning, you know, athletically and, and, and physically and everything like that, I think because of his gifts is able to make those plays and, and stands out more. But I do think Tough Borland has value. And I think he's shown this year um, that, you know, while he's not going to make all of the big plays, he's not going to wow you all the time. I think there is value in, in what he does, what he brings. And, and we didn't even touch on the leadership side of things. You know, he's obviously a captain, um, one of, if not the leader of the defense. So 
I think they continue to to rotate those guys. Um, I know people will complain about Tuff Boylan and, and, and what he does or what he doesn't do, but he certainly has a value out there. They wouldn't have him on the field if they didn't, especially with a guy like Baron Browning um, able to step into the game. But, you know, so far with this defense, it's worked. I don't know why you would, would make changes unless something pops up that uh, that you don't expect. But I think they keep rotating those two. I think that uh, both guys give you something, even if it doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. As I mentioned earlier, to lead off the show, we're going to interview Ryan Day today uh, here just in a few short hours uh, at high noon. Um, You know, maybe it's too early to say this, but this is what we do. Uh, We analyze, we, you know, make predictions, we sometimes throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Um, But Ryan Day, Patrick, to me, he seems to check every box, and I just am so impressed with him. I also get that... We're six games into his head coaching career, because I'm not counting the three games last year when he was interim head coach. I mean, he could have done a great job during those three games, and Ohio State could have went in a different direction. You know, this is, the job didn't really become his till December. And mm-hmm. I think since then, with everything he's done putting his staff together, um, the way he's knocking it out with recruiting, even things like that people probably don't care about outside of us, the way he handles the media, um, obviously the way he handles the team is paramount, and the way they're playing. Um, just six games into his head coaching career, but I could not be more impressed with him across the board. Uh, just your thoughts. I completely agree. Uh, you know, I was impressed with him with the way he handled things last year. Um, obviously, the way he he ran the offense as quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator. But he stepped into this role, and it's it's been seamless. I mean, you know, just any sort of struggles we envision. Um, you know, going from a, a legend, a rock star like Urban Meyer to a guy who was really unproven as a head coach, as you mentioned, only had three games of experience. Um, any concern about that quickly went out the window when you saw this Ohio State team, um, you know, and, he, and even last spring, the way he handled, you know, running that and, and getting this team ready for the year, hiring his staff. I mean, it's just, he's hit home runs so far and everything. And like you said, it's only six games in, but you know, Ohio State's ranked number four in the country for a reason. Um, you know, you could argue that they should be even higher. And, uh, you know, I think we were waiting to see what this team would be like on the field after believing that Ryan Day had a very successful off season and six teams in, they've, they've done nothing but impress. So uh, I think he's been great. I think Ohio State's in a very good situation with him running the program. Um, you know, I think he does things the right way. I think people like to work for him. I know people like to work for him. I know the players are really enjoying um, how he's running the program, and, and obviously they're winning on the field. So, so far, like you said, six games, 6-0, six and oh, um, you know, dominating opponents. There's been very few struggles. So uh, I, I don't know how you give him anything but an A-plus so far with, with how he's started off his tenure as Ohio State's head coach. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy. Really appreciate it, Patrick. And thank you to all listeners for tuning into the show. I appreciate that as well. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land.